Welcome once again to Ferros Technology. Today we're going to discuss the input mask and the input mask wizard. So let's go. So an input mask is a, a field property where a string containing as many as three se separate sections can be defined to only accept input for, from your users for a certain amount of, or certain characters or numbers. So let's see how that works. So the first section creates the mask itself. And we're gonna talk quite a bit about the characters you can use to regulate exactly what characters you're going to expect from that user. The next section tells whether uh, a character in there needs to be a literal character. Now, a literal character is important here because like, for example, when you're, when you're doing a, a telephone number and you want parentheses around the area code, you tell the input mask that I need a left paren for a literal character, and then I can only take numbers in the next three characters, and then a literal character for the, the close paren, and then the dash, for example. So we're going to see that when we start creating some of these masks where the literal characters come in. The next thing is uh, the placeholder. What do you want to define as the placeholder for the various characters so that you can define the length of a field? What we want to do is go over real quick the, the characters that you can use to define that mask. First are the digit characters. Now, zero, a digit is required. A nine, the digit is optional. You can't have plus or minuses in either one of those, but if you put a pound sign in there, the there's an option of putting a digit or a space in there, but the spaces are removed when the data is saved uh, at to the table. The next thing is where really you, you need your cheat sheet off to the side here because none of these really make logical sense. A capital L is used to represent a letter that is required. A, a question mark is considered uh, is a letter that is A to Z or optional. And then a capital A is for a character or digit that is required. And then a lowercase a for a character or digit that is optional to put in there. In other words, when you fill up the space with digits or letters that are required, the number of characters is a fixed set and the user has to put in all of those characters in order to save that particular record. The last one is the ampersand permits any character or space and a capital C permits any character or space where it's optional. Now, like I said, the, the letters and characters optional versus required Really, you need a cheat sheet off to the side to remember those because there's really no logical pattern to those. So then let's go on. Now, uh, numbers, well, let's get into numbers. Uh, the period of decimal placeholder comma is a thousand placeholder. Okay, we, we can pretty well understand those. A colon is a date time separator. We've seen that before. And a semicolon is a separator character that we generally use to separate the different sections uh, that we talked about on the very first slide. Then you have the less than sign, which uh, converts everything to lowercase. And then you have the greater than sign, which converts everything to uppercase. So those are, those are pretty good. So when you want people to put in specific upper and lowercase lettering, you can then force that to happen. Like let's say you want everybody to put in your, their first name and last name you can then put the greater than sign for the first character and then the less than sign for everything that follows so that you get the first letter capitalized, okay? So next thing is the exclamation point. These are a couple, you know, about three miscellaneous items that I see. The exclamation point starts filling in the characters from the right to the left. Um, then the backslash character, uh, is your literal. In other words, you use a backslash then to define that the next character is going to be a literal character like the open paren in the telephone number. 
You can also, if you have a, a bunch of characters in a row that need to be literals, you can enclose them with quotation marks so that they can be displayed as literals. Okay, so let's go ahead and look um, now at what the input mask wizard can do for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the database and I have an open table in design view and I've got a short text field set here. Where you find your input mask is right down here. When you click into that field, you have an ellipsis over on the right hand side which opens up the input mask. It says you have to save the table first. I just hit save and we move on. So it has a few canned ones so you don't have to create them yourself, like the telephone number, social security number if you live in the US, a zip code, an extension, password, and notice it has the input masks here of, of stars like you're used to seeing. Uh, we can go ahead and make that. So if I were to put in uh, a password here, you notice that it gets masked. If we click on next here, the, all the information is there and you finish and you can see it's a password type down here. You don't even get to, to see how they created that mask. So let's do another one so you can actually see how they created the mask. Uh, let's do the uh, telephone number. And if we try it, notice the cursor is at the right. In other words, it, it appears as though they used the exclamation point to have it fill in from the right to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in an area code and no, of course not. I have to put the cursor over here to make it fill in. So I'm not quite sure what the cursor was doing clear at the right. And so all those characters are now filled in. If I click next, exclamation point is there, but I'm not quite sure why it didn't fill from the right. What placeholder do you want? Uh, we'll just leave it at an underscore and next. Without the symbols in the mask, this asks you which, how do you want to save your data? Do you want to save it? with the symbols or without the symbols. So if you have the data saved with the symbols, that's the way you're gonna see it in your data set. Otherwise you'll just see a string of numbers and then you'll have to have a, a format string in your forms or, or in the table to get it back looking like this. So I generally on phone numbers like to save it like that. We'll click next and finish. And here you can see how they constructed that particular item. So the zero here represents that we're gonna save them with the characters in the field. The underscore is that placeholder character that it asked on that second dialog box, even though it's the third item in the uh, semicolon separated areas here. So you see the three separated areas, and then you see how the phone number is constructed here, where you've got multiple characters here. They used the quotation marks for the close paren and the space, and then you see the uh, backslash here for simply the single character open paren and a single character dash here. So you can see that they're fairly easy to construct. You just have to keep your cheat sheet over there and then you have to play with it a little bit to see how it actually works. And in fact, when you're using the wizard here and choosing uh, a particular one like this, you can always get to a particular screen like here and keep trying it as as it works here, you actually see the input mask. So I like using the wizard, even if I'm not gonna choose one of the predefined forms, I use the wizard so that I can uh, play with it here. I can change these numbers here uh, I, instead of putting a dash. I hope that you can see by, by using the wizard, you can actually construct one. And sometimes it can be educational as you, as you look at how the wizard constructed one to get kind of ideas as to how to construct your own. So if you found that this video was helpful, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and hit that like button and send this out to other people. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.